Don't you worry. There we are. I see you're spending my money wisely. Whose money? 
You did say I could do what I like with my own allowance. Did I? Oh, fool me. Now, come on, Davis. Show us around. Honestly, George, I'm sure they'll prove a great investment. Mm, so they better, for your sake. Uh, that money my wife gave you is only a loan, you know? Yes, I know. I'm sure John understands. Uh, what's this uh, red star mean? You know perfectly well it means it's been sold. Uh, well, I don't see many about. Have you got any impressionists? Well, no. These are basically new and unknown artists. Oh, pity. I like impressionists. Uh, damn good investment. I made a packet out of mine. This is exciting. George, don't you think so? George? Yes, uh, very good. Where did you get this? From the artist. Victor Clare, I don't think I know that. Is he young? Uh, no, that's the funny thing. In fact, he's getting on a bit. Davis, I want this piece. George? How much is it? Oh, I'm sorry, it's already sold. Who to? To an American dealer. Can't you tell him you changed your mind? You know he can't go back on a deal. It's just not done. I'm awfully sorry. I didn't, I didn't see you there. Damn drunk. Why don't you throw him out? It might be a little difficult. He's uh, Victor Clare's son, Michael. Without him, I wouldn't have got any of the Clare pieces. Well, perhaps he could get another piece for George. I don't want another piece. I'm sure if we ask this Victor Clare... He... No. He sees no one. He uh, lives as a recluse. He hasn't shown any of his work since before the war. Stop bellyaching. I've already told you I don't want just any piece. I want that one. I think we'd better hurry. You'll miss your plane. Uh, George is going to Germany for a week. Well, I don't know. It's my money that's paying for all this. It's just a loan. It doesn't give you any rights. No, but just you make sure that money's paid back by the end of the week or we'll see who's got any rights. I'm afraid he means it. I'll manage. I hope so. I thought I was supposed to be the drunk. Who were those, um, those two heavies you were talking to? Seemed to get you down a bit. Who were they? That was George Brent. Oh. Yeah, and his wife, Joanna. Well, you seem to be getting on all right with her, but I don't think he fancied you. I think he preferred blondes. <laughs> well, what were they doing here? Buying? They're my backers. They lent me the money to buy all this stuff and set up the show. Well, what happens if you don't sell it all? What do you think? Still, they're not trying to make a profit out of me. She regards herself as a sort of patron of the arts. Conscience money. One of my father's favorite expressions. He, he'll turn to my mother and he'll say, Conscience money. Most rich men have to salve their conscience by buying pictures or being patrons of the arts, but your father gave me you. you. You see, all his money came from her trust fund. He could never quite forgive her for that. Bastard. Still, his work sold well. <laughs> but the only things they'd have. How much have we made? Well, it's hard to say. Your cut should be about half a grand, I should think. Good. No, it's all right for you. My share's all tied up in this other stuff.
You, uh, you did say there was a lot more of this stuff. At the studio. Oh, yes, no more like this, though. He, he didn't do any more sculpture after this one. I don't know why. Plenty of pictures of that. You don't think there's a chance of getting any more, do you? Oh, no, 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 not a hope. After tonight, I could sell anything by him. I got a pretty good price for it, too. No, it's too risky. I couldn't possibly smuggle any more. As I said, he'd go crazy now if he knew. Come on. I'm not kidding. You don't know him like I do. He can be pretty violent. You know, I think he could even kill me if he knew. Listen. Supposing I meet him and offer him hard cash. Oh, I don't know. Might be a possibility. I remember when I was down there last time, there was some talk about the trust wasting away. Could be that the cost of living is finally catching up with Victor. I can't see him economizing. I'd like to have a go at him. Might be a complete waste of time. Look, Mike, I know I can sell your father's work quickly. If I could reinvest the takings from the sales tonight in some more of his work, I can make a quick profit and pay off the Brents. Otherwise, I'll never recoup that loan. Well, when would you like to meet him? Well, it's got to be soon. Could go down to Jericho this weekend. Where? Oh, it's what we call the family, for want of a better word, seat. Jericho Valley. I haven't been there for some time. I owe them a visit. And Victor is very keen on Jane. He fancies her, does he? Who fancies who? We all fancy you, darling. Well, at least someone's enjoying themselves. How's it going, then? Oh, not too bad. Don't you mean not too good? Would you like a look around? Oh, no, thanks. Uh, well, perhaps you and Mike would like to come upstairs for a drink. I know Millie would like to see you. Isn't she down here sharing your hour of triumph? Uh, no, um... Are you sure? No, thanks. I think we'll go while Mike can still walk. I suppose I'd better be off. This weekend, then? Well, if you're sure you want to come. Well, I've warned you, Victor can be pretty nasty. Look, it's my only chance. It's up to you. Uh, I know. Bring Millie along. May help soften him up.
John Davis. Yes, Michael. It's John. Look, do you think you could possibly muster enough strength to take the things down? We shan't be a minute, John. Look, by the way, I absolutely refuse to travel with Mike. Will you drive him? Sure, you can ride with Millie. You can have a good old nag. Come on, get out. Why? We have to contend with a bit of artistic temperament. I'm taking Michael. You can keep Jane company in her car. Don't say they've had another row. What's the matter with those two? The usual problems. I suppose Jane's been on at him again. All she wants is a good hiding. How do you know? I know women, so watch it. <laughs> Morning, Mike. What? In the doghouse again. <laughs> I've been there for so long, I'm beginning to enjoy it. <laughs> Here. How are you? Looking well. Um, this is a friend of mine, John Davis. How do you do, Mrs. Clare? Where's Jane? Uh, she's following in our car. Where's Father? Prodigal returns, father. No fatted calf. I, I think a little more emphasis on the highlight. You know, Marcia, my love, I think you're putting on weight. Jane's here. Here, let me give you a hand. All right? Here. Hello, love. Come on. I've had a word with the old man. I think we'd better leave it till tomorrow. There's no point in tackling him until he's in the right mood. How'd you like the old place? It was very beautiful. Very strange. Yes, I thought you'd like it. You weren't kidding when you said it was remote. Nobody ever comes here now. What a weird atmosphere, isn't it? That's the souls of the dead miners. Used to be a tin mine. One of the biggest. Until the accident. Yeah? There was this terrible disaster. They never recovered some of the bodies. Of course, no one would work here after that. They do say 
that the place will stay haunted until their bodies lie in consecrated ground. <laughs> Laugh all you like, but some people believe in it. Who? Well, all the locals. Victor? And she used to. A Japanese bird. The model for the bronze? A strange woman. Religious mania. She introduced Victor to this weird sect. They believed that the spirits of the dead had power over the living. They actually believed that a soul could take over and transform living flesh. You don't believe all that rubbish. The only spirits you believe in are pale brown and poured out of a bottle. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Sake, be careful. You mustn't run around like that. These cliffs are dangerous. Well, what were you doing scaring me like that? What do you mean? Following me. I wasn't following you. But I heard you. I don't know what you heard, but it wasn't me. I've just come up from the house to look for you. It's nearly time for supper. Well, someone was definitely there. Oh, you're imagining it. The wind or a seagull or something. Oh, I suppose so. It's just this place. I feel as if I've been here before. Deja vu. What? That's what it's called, deja vu. It's quite common. Something to do with the brain getting out of phase or something. No, it's not that. This is different. I've definitely been here before. Maybe you came down here on holiday when you were a kid. No. Anyway, who do you think would want to follow you? Come on. Better tell your guests dinner's ready. Come and get it. Oh, here they are. You... You don't know each other, do you? Uh, this is Bill Cartwright, Millie, and John. Bill is my father's oldest friend. And his only friend. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet some of Mike's friends. Nice to see some fresh faces around the old place. I was just saying, it's nice to have some new faces, Dorothy. I hope you weren't expecting haute cuisine. We live very simply here. You're a super cook, Bill, and you know it. He's had plenty of practice. Well, here we are, then. Yes, Michael, do help yourself to wine. Jane? Still as lovely as ever. And who are our guests? John Davis and Millie. Charming. Absolutely charming. How lucky we are to have two such lovely young people with us. The young are so refreshing, aren't they? Just what I was saying, Victor. Well, Bill, I thought that you were only interested in antiques. It's uh, quite a place you have here. A perfect retreat. Oh, not perfect, Mr. Davis. Nothing is perfect. Nothing and no one. That's a sad fact of life. Take uh, Marcia, for example. Look at her. Beautiful, isn't she? Now look at my wife. She was beautiful once. Won't you, my dear? Sorry, Victor. Why have you brought that thing to my table? I've told you before, I won't have it.
wonderful. This one's really marvelous. Look at the color, the composition, the detail. These are all very good. Thank you, my dear. Of course, I don't really know very much about art. Don't you do sculpture as well? I did once. That must be very difficult. Well, mostly just hard work. Why did you start? Inspiration died. Oh, what a shame. Tell me, have you ever posed for an artist? It's fantastic. Line, draftsmanship. John seems to know a lot about painting. Yes, he knows a lot about art. Really? Yes, he organized a show only last week. Did he now? And how did it do, this show? Very well, I believe. Do you like the urn? It's very old. A friend gave it to me. Some sort of ritual ornament. For blood. It may have been, but more likely wine if I know those orgies. These paintings are really great. Really? She seems mightily taken by my past. I know. She shall have it. A memento of your visit. No. Oh, but I insist. No, I don't want to. Terribly sorry. I... Oh, I'm sure she meant no harm. <sighs> what more can I say? I expect she's just tired after the journey. I expect she's bored by all this arty chat and gone to find herself a drink, and I vote we join her. Come on. Jane, you were very cruel to me at supper. Must be catching. Sorry. It's just my work. It's not going well. I'm tired of Marcia. She no longer inspires me. Well, get rid of her. You never seem to have any trouble finding new models. But one always escapes me. Victor, I've told you. I can't. How old are you, my dear? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. The years are rushing by. Soon, even your exquisite loveliness will fade. Really? Look, if you knew some unique treasure, was rotting away. Wouldn't you want to save it? Of course. Then why not let me start some sketches tonight? Tonight? Why not? Michael would be livid. Oh, Michael. But Victor, I do. Is it? Somebody there? Are you looking for these? Thanks. Would you like a drink? No. A pity. As I don't like drinking on my own. Still, needs must. I'm surprised to find you still here. You see, Victor usually gets rid of his birds pretty regularly. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not really surprised that you've lasted the course. Because you really are. Sometimes I envy my father. Don't you find that funny? Why should I? Envying a... psychopath. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Why not? I've had plenty of practice. You said it. One day I'll show you. I'll show the lot of you. I'm every bit as good as my father. Oh, yes? What at?
Steve. Oh, Steve. Why did you bring me down here? But it would make a nice weekend for you. I don't like this place. Well, what's wrong? Victor, look at the way he talked at dinner. Well, so is a bit strange. Living stuck down here for 30 years, I'm not surprised. Strange. Do you know he hardly took his hand off my leg all the way through supper? <laughs> well, what's so strange about that? Often can't see about that myself. <laughs> You make me sick the way you play up to him, laughing at everything he says like a hard up. Well, at least he's got some charm. He fancies you, he makes a play for you. You do nothing to discourage him. What must John think of me? Oh, don't be stupid. We should never have come. Has he asked you to pose for him again? Shut up. Oh. Don't mind me, I'm just your husband. Oh, is that what you are? I thought you were a charity I've been supporting for years. Don't worry. I'll pay you back. This deal... This deal would be like every other deal. Why bother to pour it out? Why not just dive into the bottle? Oh, I wouldn't need the booze if... If what? Come on, I'd like to know. If I had a decent wife. God, I like that. I feed you, clothe you, clear up your filthy mess. I've given you everything. No, not everything. Well, what? What haven't I given you? Respect. Respect? I'll respect you when you stop making me sick. I'm going to stay with friends. Don't come looking for me. Until you learn to respect yourself. Oh, Victor. I was worried. I thought you'd forgotten our appointment. Well, actually, I... If you still want to paint to me, I'm ready. I'm all ready to start. Where do I sit? Well, first you have to change. Change? Well, surely <laughs> you're teasing me. You're not shy, are you? You do want to pose for me. Uh, Try this one. It's not right. There's no feeling. Perhaps if we try another pose. Hello, Victor. No? In God's name, what's the matter now? Sorry, I can't. Sorry? Sorry? Is that all you can say? Please don't be angry. Please don't be angry. What do you think you're doing to me? You can't turn me on and off like a damn switch. Oh, you make me sick!
Victor? Victor? Is anyone there? Fine morning. Yes, it's lovely. Are you sure you wouldn't like a little toast? No, thank you. It's not healthy. Going without breakfast. He's nice, isn't he? He's been with Victor for something like 30 years. He used to help him when he did his own casting. Sort of studio technician. But don't you need lots of equipment for that, a forge and things? Oh, he's got one. See that stone building over there? Yes. This used to be an old tin mine. Victor converted the furnace they used for smelting tin. But he doesn't use it anymore. Good morning, Michael. Isn't Jane up yet? Don't ask me, huh? Oh, yeah. oh, been all right. We had a terrible row last night. She went back to London. In the middle of the night? Yes, well, she's done it before. I remember when we were on holiday in Spain, she left. Didn't see her for three weeks. She's always doing it. And you don't blame her either. I didn't hear her go. Nor me. I heard her drive away. It's a beautiful morning. I've been for a long walk. I trust that you, Mr. Davis, and the lovely Millie are going to take full advantage of our good sea air. Yes, we hope to later. After we've talked business. Oh, Michael didn't give your little game away. You did. I did. By coming here, you're not one of Michael's friends. You're not the sort. Besides, I noticed there were one or two bits and pieces missing from my collection some weeks ago. I wondered what had happened to them. I suppose my son stole them and sold them to you. I didn't steal them. We won't go into that now. Oh, don't be embarrassed. I'm, of course, delighted to see you for whatever the reason. Especially when you bring such a lovely companion. I suppose it would be too much to hope she might be persuaded to pose for me. Now, just a minute. Don't I have any say in this? <laughs> of course you do, my dear. It's just our little joke. Mr. Davis, perhaps you'd like to come along to the studio and we can talk. Yes. Oh, yes, do come too, Michael. After all, you'd better protect your business interests. Victor, will you be needing me today? Not until this afternoon. I thought I'd go down to the beach. Good idea. Now, why not take Millie along with you? <laughs> a hundred for this, a hundred for this, and a hundred and fifty for this. And I'd like some sculpture. No doubt you would. Well, let's see, that's about two thousand pounds you've offered me. It's a fair offer. Is it? Is it indeed? How much profit will you make? Oh, it's difficult to say. And how much profit will my son make? Two thousand pounds. It's hmm, a lot of money. How much did you get for the stuff you stole, eh, Michael? Was robbing your father a profitable business? Oh, for God's sake. Well, uh, what would you call it? I'd call it taking what was owed to my mother. She knew about it? No, no, of course not. Well, I thought not. She hasn't the nerve to stand up to you. Turned her mind with your bullying, your deceit. 
Yes, I robbed you. And I'm proud of it. It's the only decent thing I've ever done, and I'm proud of it. And you did it for your mother? For both of us. Your mother? Let me show you your mother. This is how she was 30 years ago. And this is how I still see her. Look at her. Isn't she desirable? Wouldn't any man want her? That mad, senile old hag isn't the woman that I knew. to worry. I shan't go to the police about your little escapade. Thank you. But it wasn't all one-sided, you know. Yeah. No. Your work sold very well. It should do you a lot of good. In what way? To make your name known as an artist. Why should I care about that? Do you think that's what I work for? Well, at least people will be able to see your work. People? What people? I don't work for people. I preserve the beauty of my models for myself and myself alone. That's what he could never understand. He wanted me to be rich and famous so that he could bask in my reflected glory. You are mad. And spend my money on his pleasures. Mad as a hatter. Shut up! You know, it's just as well you do live down here. Because if you were in the real world, they'd lock you up. Get out, you sniveling little swine! Get out and never come back! I have a good mind to have you certified. Then they would lock you up and I could sell your paintings or, or maybe even burn them. I'll kill you first! For God's sake, Mike! All right, I'm going. I'm sorry to have spoiled your little scheme. Well, I'm sorry that you should have had to witness that. Well, it's partly my fault. I didn't realize all this would be stirred up when I came. Perhaps I'd better go. Yes, perhaps you had. <laughs> Wait. About my work. It is just possible I might sell some. Well, that would be... But I should want cash. Strictly cash. Those pictures you selected, how much did they come to? About 2,000. Do you have the money on you? Well, no. I thought I'd make you a cash down payment and let you have the rest later. No, that won't do. I want cash, and I want it today. But I can't raise that kind of money just like that. It, besides, it's Sunday. The banks are shut. Do you want the work? Oh, yes, of course. And you have until tonight. Mmm, that feels good. All right. That's a lovely kimono. Where'd you get it? In a market. Market? Yes, I collect Victorian things. I often go around to sales and markets. You can pick up things very cheaply. It's my hobby. You'd never believe it. That was a pound. No. Yes. Here, now it's my turn. If you like Victorian things, you should come to the boutique. Boutique? Yes, that's the business side. I've got a small boutique. I specialize in Victorian things. I do hate the mark that your bikini leaves, don't you? I sometimes sunbathe with no clothes on. Do you? How would you feel? No. I'd be too embarrassed. But no one can see. Bad luck, darling.
Obviously, I have no choice. I can't trust him. He will keep his word. It's not for me to say, old chap. I just wouldn't leave it too long. You'll be taking young Millie with you? No, it's a bit of a long journey there and back. Anyway, she's out with Marcia somewhere. Why, do you think I should? No, no. Oh, she'll be all right. Anyway, she can keep the old man sweet. I think it was a bit of luck bringing her with me. Might even have swung the deal my way. Well, she's a pretty girl. Yep. Yeah. Right, well, I, uh, I should be back about 11. I'll keep an eye on her for you. That nice young Mr. Davis had to go rushing off like that. He said he'd be back as soon as possible. And meanwhile, he's left a most charming ambassador in his stead. Not much of an ambassador, I'm afraid. I really don't know anything about art. Oh, I'm sure that can't be so. It is, it's absolutely true. In fact, I feel a bit like a fish out of water. Well, John's always taking me to exhibitions and things, but... Well, somehow, I just know what I like. You must let me teach you. Well. Come with me to my studio. Come now. Well, I said I'd help Bill with the washing up. Well, Marcia can do that. Besides, you really would be doing me a great favor. I do want to make a couple of sketches of you. No, really, I, I'm no good at that sort of thing. I, I can't sit still for a minute. Oh, but Millie. Anyway, I've got... I've i got a terrible headache. I think I'll just go and lie down. Joanna, listen. No, I'm Is Mr. Reynolds there? Oh, this is Jim Reynolds. Who's that? Hello, Mr. Reynolds. John Davis here. Who? Davis. We met last year at the RA dinner. Did we? Oh, yes, I remember. I was wondering if you'd care to make a little investment. What sort of an investment? I've discovered this marvellous new artist who... No, thanks. Now, wait, let me tell you. Sorry, Mr. David. Davis. Well, I'm not interested in that sort of venture. I got my fingers turned too often. But look! Sorry. Is it? I was just wondering how you're feeling. It's still rather bad. Pity. I thought that perhaps you might like a walk by the sea. It'll clear your head. No, I think I'll just rest. You're sure? Yes, I, I'll just lie down. Very well, my dear. I'll call back later and see how you are. But Harry! <sighs> Funny Jane leaving so suddenly last night, wasn't it? Was it? Up to your old tricks again. Mind your own business. Anyway, you heard Michael. They had a row. Yes, I heard him. I heard you on the stairs as well. All right. I always said your ears were a little out of proportion, just a little too big. And your mouth. Very lovely, but... Anyway, I'm no longer interested in Jane. Found somebody new. Don't tell me. Let me guess. Poor Victor. Playing hard to get, is she? Oh, shut up. 
Her beauty fascinates me. So young and fresh. If I want her, I'm not going to it. Oh, I'm sorry. You all right? Yes. You look upset. How do you like my little collection? I was out east before the war. Were you? I made a bit of a study of their military history and ancient customs. You see this shield? It's over 300 years old. And that helmet is Tan Sin, second century. At least I think it is. It could be a good fake, I suppose. I say, are you all right? Joanna, I must talk to you. I told you I've done all I can. You'll have to talk to George. And he's not back from Germany. But it's a fantastic opportunity. All right, Rhonda. Yes, John. We've always been, well, close. Have we? I thought so. I've always thought that in you I had a real friend. How nice. Our relationship has been more than just sponsoring, beneficiary. You mean it wasn't just my money? Oh, come on. I always think of you as a truly wonderful person, a real connoisseur of the arts. That sounds very grand. I just thought you fancied me. No. You mean you don't fancy me? Yes. Yes, of course, I... Now, please don't send me up, Joanna. Well, don't try to con me. I'm not. This really is a great deal. Look, this guy... Now, you're boring me. Let's get back to the other subject. What? About your fancying me. Are you there, Millie? I should come down if I were you. Those caves lead to the old mine workings. They stretch for miles. If you once get lost in there, you'll never get out. 
Millie! Millie, don't be afraid! Millie! Millie! Don't be afraid! Yes. Yes. I. I've tried not to mind about the girls. What girls? All of them. The girls you've had here. Girls? Oh, you mean my models? I've tried not to mind. Mind? An artist must have models. Surely even you understand that. Why, you used to pose for me yourself. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, no. Arcee oh, doesn't like me. Dorothy, why are you here? Here? Yeah. Here, yeah, in my studio. About this girl. What girl? You mustn't. Ah, do you mean Millie? She's very young. Not so young that she plays with dolls. Shout, you may poor Jenny cry. Oh, for God's sake, Dorothy. She's going to cry. It's a doll, a plastic doll. Poor Jenny, never mind. A doll, Dorothy, a doll. A cheap, ugly, rotten plastic doll. <laughs> Aveva! 
Run it where you got to. I got lost in the mine. Why did you go in there? It was Victor. He was chasing me. Chasing you? Yes, I went into the mine and he followed me. I think he just didn't want to see you get into any trouble. Why have you started the forge? He's asked me to start it up. Just like that, after all these years. Says he feels inspired. He must be. It'll be hours before the metal's hot enough. Mind that back. It's full of sulfuric acid. We use it in the process. What do you think of my little toy, my dear? Beautiful, isn't she? <laughs> I was worried about you in the mine. Several people have been killed there. And one or two lost forever. Well, I'm all right. So I see. I was wondering if you've given any further thought to posing for me. I don't really want to. I've seen many beautiful women in my time, but few have had the illuminating loveliness that you possess. You're very flattering. That's a simple truth, my dear truth that I must capture in bronze. Well... Think about it. Tom's come to say hello to you. Don't you want to say hello to Tom Tom? Uh, yes, of course. I think he likes you. He bites people he doesn't like. Sometimes he bites Victor. Don't you think we ought to be going downstairs? He's lit the furnace, you know. I never go down to the forge, never. Oh, I think it's very interesting. You mustn't go there. Must she, Tom, 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 Tom says you mustn't go there. My husband loved me once. I'm sure. He didn't just marry me for my money. Do you like my dress? Oh, yes, it, it's very pretty. Do you like Bill? Well, I... <laughs> I like Bill. He gives me things. Have you seen my things? They're very pretty. Victor likes pretty things, but he... Do you like Victor? Well, I do. If you do, you're the only one who does. Tom Tom bites him sometimes. Yes, you said. You must go away. You must go away now. I can't. Why not? Well, for one thing, I haven't got a car. Oh. Marcia wouldn't go away either. I shall be going soon. Tomorrow. Tom Tom bites Marcia sometimes. <laughs> she doesn't like it. Victor used to pain me once. He's lit the furnace. You? I'm Millie. I've brought a present for you. It's very nice. It's on the bed. What do you think of our little Millie? She seems very nice. Doesn't she remind you of anyone? No, I don't think so. Oh, surely you've noticed. No. What about our Japanese friend? Japanese? 
Oh, don't be coy, Bill. Surely you've seen the likeness. No, they seem quite different to me. Do they? Well, perhaps they would to you. The resemblance I see is more than just a physical likeness. They both have the same magic, that's it. I wonder what happened to her. Yes, the little bitch. Do you know she really thought she was immortal? Did she? Well, they're a funny lot, you know. You can have it if you like. After all your years of devotion to her, I suppose you deserve something. I don't understand why you wouldn't divorce her when I asked you. Simple. I needed her money. And Bill, she didn't want you. Not then, not even now. To me, a beautiful woman is worth more than rubies. Her skin, her hair, her body are the earth, fire and air of creation. To look at her, to caress her, to possess her, this is all I ask of that. Did you know that Millie agreed to pose for me. No, no, Victor, I forbid it. You? You forbid it? Yes. You can forbid nothing, my dear. You think I care about you. I'm finished with you. You're old and ugly. Look at her. And to think I once desired this character. You forbid me. You really are mad. Leave her alone! Ben Haven, 357. John. Yes, you want to talk to Millie? Hello, darling. Where are you? Miss Millie. I've got the money, but the car's packed in. I'm miles away. You must get back. Maybe I can persuade Victor to wait. No, for me. What's the matter? Darling, please come and get me. Please. What's the matter? Tell me. It's Victor. It keeps on pestering me. Look, I can't explain now, but please come back. Oh, stop exaggerating. Look, I've mortgaged myself up to the hilt for this deal. Don't you get in his way or he might change his mind. This is the biggest deal I've ever had. It means more to me than... Than I do. Don't be silly. This is for both of us. Look, I'm frightened. Just play along with it. Wait a moment. John's car's broken down. Oh? Where? I don't know. You speak to him. Hello, John. Where are you? I'm just outside Bodmin. Oh, that's not so bad. I'll get the van out and come and pick you up. It's only about 30 miles. Yes, I could be there in an hour. I'll wait here. Right. Darling? Now look, Millie. Don't upset Victor. My whole future depends upon it. I know, but... Do you love me? Oh, yes, of course. And promise me you won't do anything to upset this deal. Right? I promise. Good. Well, I'd better be going. I'll just get my coat. Hello, 
Where are you going? I'm going to fetch John. His car's broken down. I don't want you to go. I can't leave him stuck there, I'm can I? I'm frightened when you go. You go to bed. I shan't be long. I heard you and Victor talking. Heard us? I can hear things in my room. Did you really want to marry me? We'll talk about it later. I've got to go. I think I'll go to my cave. No, I told you. I like my cave. Better stay in the house. In my cave, I saw... Who? Who did you see? Someone. Who? Michael, no. i better be going. You really wanted to marry me? I'm a man inspired. After all these barren years, you have inspired me. It's the truth. You must let me capture your beauty and preserve it forever. Look at the fire. Watch it burn. No one can capture the beauty of the flame because such beauty demands Total sacrifice. Even while it burns, it consumes its own heart. All great beauty, all great art, demands this ultimate sacrifice. It is the price of immortality. Let me immortalize. will pose for me, won't you? I heard you come up. I assume you want to work. Correct, I do. How do you want me? Shall I take up this morning's pose? No, go to bed. What? Don't tell me. Well, you won't be needing me tonight, then. Or ever again. What does that mean? Well, I thought that was quite plain. You don't think you can get rid of me just like that, do you? Why not? You were paid well enough. Paid for posing, maybe. But that's not all I did. Well, that was up to you. Look, I'm not some little art school tart you pick up and throw away just when you feel like it. You've had other girls before, I haven't minded. It doesn't bother me if you just want to sleep with her. You're beginning to sound as though you thought you had some say in the matter. Don't think I haven't. And what do you think you can do? Oh, get out before I lose my temper. Just what has she got that I haven't? What's so special about her? This girl has an inner radiance, such as I've only seen once before. Hers is a beauty of the soul, and it's her soul I shall capture through my art. Oh, very impressive. But don't think I'm just going to sit back and take it, because I'm not. Oh. Really, my love. Here, let me. I've been talking to Victor about you. You have definitely made a conquest. I hope that was your intention. He just said he wanted to do a few sketches. Is that what he said? Nothing else? No. Why? Well, 
while he was going on a great deal about your beauty. I must say I agree with him. Are you going to pose for him? Well, I don't really want to, but what can I do? He can be very persuasive. He frightens me, but I expect I'm just being stupid. I suppose he told you you inspired him. Who tells him all that? Oh, don't worry, we all fall for it. Even I did once. How long have you been with him? Long enough. I've never posed for an artist before. Do you think this will be all right? <laughs> You're so naive. Once he gets you in there, I don't think he'll give a damn about what you're wearing, do you? Don't forget, if things get a bit much, my door is always open. Millie, are you ready? I won't be long. So you came, after all.
nobody here. Forge. don't understand. Victor, the others, it's terrible. One thing I learned out east, never underestimate the power of revenge. You shouted something. What was it? Chai San? What did that mean? That was the name of a girl. Japanese. As soon as I came through that door and saw Millie in that kimono, I knew. But this Chai San? Oh, yes. Chai San. Victor was obsessed by her. I don't know what happened. He was under her spell for years, then she just disappeared. All that was left was a bronze, his best work. But he said it was cursed, hid it away. This girl was high up in a very sinister religious sect. They believed the spirits of the dead could enter the mind of anyone who wore that kimono and use their body to take revenge. I read once that in extreme cases the body of the wearer actually took on a likeness of whoever was controlling their mind. Once Millie had put it on, she was completely under Chai Sen's control. In a trance. Mike, Jane, the others. Millie didn't even realize what she had done. You mean that? That thing? That was Millie? As I said, she had grown to resemble her controller. What tragedy had befallen her to make her so disfigured, I don't know. But Minnie just picked up the kimono in a market somewhere. She'd never even heard of Victor Clare. It was the most incredible chance. Was it? 
power of evil is always stronger than that of good. If you ask me, it was preordained. 